This plant has been living in this jar of water for nearly a whole year. Yes, this is a snake plant and yes, they can absolutely thrive in just water. I made a video all about it that you can check out. But Mr. Sheffield, what about root rot? Ah yes, a question I got lots of times in the comments to the original video and it's completely understandable how this flummoxed so many people. It flummoxed me not so long ago. I mean, snake plants are drought tolerant and you're not supposed to overwater them, right? Well, my plant friend, overwatering is not strictly to do with the water. No, it's more to do with oxygen or a lack of oxygen. Suffocate the roots of oxygen and they begin to rot and die off. Not good for the plant. And the number one cause of this is soggy soil. When roots live in soggy soil all the time, they are starved of oxygen. It's the combo of soil and water that does the damage. A plant living in just water is fine though. And I've got the evidence to prove it right here. I'm going to get this guy out of this jar for the very first time live on TV or phone or tablet or whatever and show you just how this plant is getting on one year later. So as I'm writing this I have absolutely no idea. I could look a fool by the end of this video. Okay okay more of a fool. So you probably sat there on your sofa right now thinking why? What's all the fuss about? Why bother going through all the palaver of removing all the soil from the roots and putting it in this jar of water and pebbles? And to that, I say bar humbug. Just look at it. It's beautiful. Well, I think so anyway. It's a bit different from your average snake plant and in my opinion, a bit of a showstopper. I've had lots of friends and family comment about how interesting it looks over the last year and Mrs. Sheffield has absolutely loved having it sat next to her on her desk. The position he lives has actually been a massive learning point for me that I'll come to in a jiffy. The original idea for doing this and one of the things I was most looking forward to was seeing how the root system would develop and show itself against the glass. But it turns out the snake plant roots are a bit slow to grow so they've not really shown themselves yet. I'll get this guy out of this vase in act 3 so we can see just how healthy the plant is. Ooh the anticipation eh? This was actually the first time I moved a plant from soil to water. I know it looked like I knew what I was doing in the original video but trust me I was a noob. I'd never grown anything hydroponically before and honestly it's been a pretty epic learning experience. And let me share that wisdom with you now. Placement. I mentioned the position it lived in was important and here's why. Algae. Yes, algae can become a bit of an issue for these kinds of plant displays with the stones turning green the water going slimy and the whole thing smelling like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. The thing that algae need to really take hold is light and I kept this bad boy well away from the light. This wasn't particularly by design mind you, I was a noob like I said. I just thought it would look nice in the corner of this desk and it just so happens it wasn't getting much sunlight in this spot. This is the main reason why the stones look relatively clean. But I guess we'll just have to look at just how clean they are when I get it out in Act 3. And this is Act 2 by the way, so not long now. Speaking of stones, the colour of the stones you use is also pretty important. The eagle eyed among you will notice that I made three jars of snake plant in the original video and now I'm only showing you one. You'll also notice that the other two had white stones. Just what was I thinking? Water, light and white stones equals a green mess and I don't mind admitting my mistake. I thought a weekly water change would keep the green stuff at bay but after a couple of months it was pretty bad. Bad enough to get rid. So if you're going to use stones, stick to black or dark coloured ones like my friend here. And by the way, the stones are just for decoration purposes. They're not adding any value to the plant apart from aesthetics, so you could go stoneless if you want. Now the position of this guy kind of behind this computer screen made it so that I forgot about him quite often. I'm not proud of myself, but it meant I didn't change the water as often as I should have. And he ponged. A month of sitting in stagnant water and sitting in your own juices will make anyone stink and this guy was no different. So don't forget to change the water. It keeps everything nice and fresh and helps keep the algae at bay. I'll do this every week. But Mr Sheffield, how on earth do you do this without tipping everything out and creating a massive mess? Another popular question in the comments and honestly it's no real bother. Just carefully tip as much of the water out as you can like this and then run tap water over the top for a couple of minutes to try and make sure that everything has been refreshed. And I didn't worry about the temperature of the water either. As long as it's not liquid nitrogen coming out of the tap, plants will be fine. 
Now there is something that you need to do that is pretty important that I have actually not been doing to this guy, the poor fella, and that is fertilise. Yes, this is very important for plants living in water. They need their Weetabix to grow big and strong, and without it they won't grow to their full potential. And this is probably part of the reason why root growth has been pretty slow. Well, we'll see just how slow it's been in a bit I guess, but it looks like it's not been firing all cylinders from the outside. But when I say I've not been feeding him for a year, that's not entirely true. I have been giving him feed every month, but I've been using my regular houseplant fertilizer and this is wrong. Plants growing in water or in semi-hydro like Lekka need to be given hydroponic fertilizer, otherwise the plant can't absorb the nutrients through the roots. A big mistake on my part, and something I've only just rectified. The plant will live of course, it's got water and light, but it's just meant growth has been a bit slower. Even slower than normal for a snake plant, which is saying something. So I released the original video in January 2023, which means that I did this project in the depths of British winter. I often get asked if you can repot a plant during winter, and the answer is yes, absolutely. I mean, I absolutely went to town on this guy. I got rid of all the soil, washed the roots thoroughly, and totally rehoused them in water and pebbles. And it's been absolutely fine, I think. If temperatures are above 12 degrees Celsius and there is some light for it to enjoy, then roots will continue to grow all year. Now I did this with an established plant with a fully fledged root system, but it can just as easily be done with leaf cuttings. And this might actually be the better option to take, because the plant won't have to adapt its root system from soil to water. The cuttings will grow water roots in the vase and then continue to live happily ever after. Just know that any leaf cuttings you make of a snake plant will lose the variegation. New growth will revert back to the original form of the plant. You can only keep variegation by propagating through division. And there is one more thing to consider if you want to take this project on, and that is those pesky mosquitoes. You get rid of one pest, i.e. the fungus now with this planting method, but potentially introduce another. We just can't win. This really didn't cross my mind when making the video, namely because it's not really a problem we face in the UK in a big way, but there is a chance mozzies will turn your vase into a breeding ground. You'll know the risk based on where you live, but just look out for the larvae in the water. The moment of truth then, so I'm going to empty the contents of this jar to have a look at how this snake plant has been getting on in water for the last year. As you can see, it looks like we've got a new growth point here, which is quite interesting because this is totally submerged in water. So I'm going to be really interested to see how this is getting on, whether it's turning mushy or not. And you can even start to see some of the roots developing underneath. So we'll have a look at that. I would say that this vase is probably not the best for this setup because it's got a tapered neck and this new growth point is trying to grow upwards, obviously. It's kind of growing inwards because of this tapered neck, so not ideal. So how are these roots looking? Not looking too bad. Seem quite healthy, nothing mushy or anything. And the stem piece is looking quite good. There's a new growth point here that is looking a bit anemic. So I'm not sure whether that's because of the lack of light of the position it was in. But the roots on that piece are pretty good. I can't remember whether these were joined together or not. I don't think they were when they've broken off. I think I'd put them in separately into the container. Um, but there's no black roots whatsoever and the stem pieces are nice and firm still. So that's good. And then there's this new growth point here, which looks like it was probably attached there actually. And I must have broken it off as I was getting it out of the container. But as you can see, it's kind of growing in a crooked fashion. So that jar was probably not ideal for it. So it looks like we've got an established new growth point here with this established leaf. I think this grew in the jar. It wasn't in the jar when I put it in last year, 
and there's some new leaves coming here. But interestingly, it looks like this leaf has lost quite a lot of definition in the variegation. So that's probably due to the lack of light of where it was on the desk behind the computer. And looking at the stones, they look surprisingly clean. So that is the difference between putting this setup in high light with white stones and these darker colored stones away from the light. It doesn't seem to have built up much algae at all. So that's really good. All in all, not too bad then. No massive root growth, but I put that down to a lack of the correct fertilizer and light. Check out the original video in full by clicking on the link on the screen now and subscribe for more fun.